own cloud as a service. Uh, I think there are also shared hosting companies who offer own cloud hosting. And if you have own cloud, then you can activate remote storage. And that means that from that point on, you can use unhosted web apps. And the data that those apps use will be on your own cloud server. We're also talking with um, some people from the Freedom Box project. The Freedom Box is uh, like a small plug server. For instance, uh, Raspberry Pi they have over there are a bit bigger, um, uh, but like a $100 uh, small server that is like this big and that you can have in your home and that uh, you can have your files on outside of the control of any uh, governments or, uh, or, or companies that might want to get their hands on it. It's, it's a bit of a threshold, but if you're, if you're a student or you're willing to sign up to some um, uh, service or you're, you know how to run a server yourself or some of your friends do, then you can have a remote storage account. And once you have that, you can run any unhosted web app you want. Um, we have, for the last two years, we were, um, uh, we presented ourselves as a project saying, well, we're like five people who do this and you can follow our progress. And uh, we stopped doing that now. We say we're no longer like a group of people. We're just uh, an anarchistic revolution. And uh, you don't have to join anywhere. You just write the unhosted web apps. And um, uh, so we explain how we, uh, we are some just an evangelist who explain how you can write unhosted web app, but anybody who writes these apps is just part of the unhosted uh, movement. Um, there is an unconference which I co unorganize. It's in two weeks, and um, we do it in uh, a village called uh, Unhost, which is written unhost. We found out that there's a village somewhere in the hills of uh, central Bohemia that was named after our project. 400 years before the, we started the project, they already named it that. They already knew that there would be an unhosted project. So in, in, if you go to Prague and then turn right, you go into the hills, it's, it's like, it's, we really like the spirit, the Bohemian spirit of traveling and, um, and um, breaking rules. And um, so in central, the, the region is actually called Central Bohemia. And there in the middle of Bohemia, there's a little village in the hills. We were there last year. It's a really nice village. And um, the, the people were really surprised to see unhosted.org t-shirts. And, um, and we had a party with them. They have the beer is like seven cents or so. And they have like local food. You got really big plates. And so we're going to, it's in two weeks, so 8 and 9 September. We're going there. It's like you just take the train to Prague and then um, it's right there. It's called Unhorst. So uh, yeah, come sign up if you want. Uh, or just show up. It's unorganized. So you can just show up in the village and then look, see if you, if you see people with uh, nerdy t-shirts and, and, that's, and that's us. There's also a Google group called Unhosted. You just look for Unhosted uh, uh, as a mailing list. And there, if you want to say something or read something about unhosted web apps, that's the place to do it. Um, ah, and start learning JavaScript. Because I know the web apps run in the browser and the language that works in every browser is JavaScript. Um, there are also some other languages that compile to JavaScript or that maybe can run in other ways in the, uh, in the browser. But the language, the universal language of the web, which is very, yeah, the cross-platform platform, that Java, Java wanted to be the cross-platform platform. But in the end, uh, JavaScript is, uh, is the language that works on so many devices and uh, is um, actually quite easy to use. It's actually quite nice language once you start using it. Um, and um, then you include the remote storage JS library, which is a library. Um, there's a guy in Hamburg who maintains it now. Uh, he's founded by the Wau Holland Stifting, who are the same people who found uh, WikiLeaks, uh, no, who fund WikiLeaks. Um, they got into trouble with that, uh, with the German government. They didn't want to do that. But now they found us, uh, us also, so that's nice. So they found this guy in Hamburg who maintains this library. And with this, you have very easy functions. You say just remote storage contacts, and then you can just add a vCard, for instance. If you have a vCard as a string in JavaScript, you just add it. And then you just search for a name, and you get back an array of JavaScript objects with these contacts. Um, there's a calendar module where you can say add an event, title, date, very simple, 
uh, get all events for this day, for this month, whatever. Just very the, basically the methods you would want to be there are on these modules. They make it very easy to use the user's data in this um, meaningful way. So, in, so the first the the user has contacts, has one address book, one calendar, one list of tasks, and all the task-based apps will see the same task list. They might display it differently, but in the end, if you switch applications, you see your same calendar, and if you create an event for one application and then look at your calendar for another, you can see it show up there on the day where it will happen. There's documents for documents, only, and there's money, uh, which is my personal favorite. We all, we're also... Um, doing this peer-to-peer anti-banking um, with this, where you can just um, send IOUs to each other in a decentralized way, because everybody has their own storage, and it doesn't go through any bank. So that's a lot of fun as well. Uh, that's still very experimental, but uh, we're working on it. Um, so remote storage is the thing we have been working on, and we now sort of start to have working after two years of thinking about how on hosted web apps should work. Uh, but it's not the only thing you would need. And, and a web app can need different sort of things. So you probably want search as well. So um, you want to use some other thing to make search possible. And maybe push notifications so you can collaborate and see change the same document at the same time. Remote storage doesn't, isn't designed for that. It doesn't do that for you. So you need some other thing with web sockets or something. And we try to use the unhosted Adorg website. So that used to be just... Um, uh, a photo of us uh, saying, hey, we are unhosted and we are working this now. It's just a blog about uh, developer resources for people who write unhosted web apps. Uh, so we try to collect all these things. Um, if you think, if you know of a technology that you think is use useful for unhosted web apps and it's not on there, um, you can either just put it on there yourself with a, with a put re uh, pull request or uh, just send an email and then we'll add it. So the idea is that that's sort of a wiki, like sort of like Mozilla Developer Network, but specific for unhosted web apps. And um, then, um, uh, Sebastian, do you want to, um, do you think you could demo something? So that if you write an unhosted web app, you have to, so you design some HTML and some CSS, and you put the functionality in with JavaScript and the remote storage to yes library, and then obviously once it works, you want to publish it. And um, Sebastian will tell you about how you can publish an unhosted web app once you have written it. Right? It's okay like this. Um, so, 
uh, I give the word back to me. Hill after this, he just uh, asked me to uh, tell you about how to deploy and distribute uh, JavaScript apps a little bit. Uh, and then you can do Q&A and ask Michiel a lot of questions because uh, you probably have some. Um, so as Michiel already said, uh, the easiest uh, option is probably to just uh, put it on GitHub pages. Um, it's kind of their static, uh, static hosting for usually documentation stuff, but you can also easily use it for apps. So you just, uh, obviously that's for open source apps. Um, you have to publish your source code then on GitHub. And you can then just go to like something, your username slash, um, slash the app. Um, and basically you have the uh, JavaScript app hosted there. Um, so this is pretty much the easiest thing, but we don't get all the nice stuff like um, uh, install uh, mechanisms, um, uh, application cache manifests, and all that stuff. You, you would have to do it all on your own. Um, and so we're working uh, on a project called Five Apps, which is basically GitHub. Well, half of what it is is GitHub pages on steroids. Yeah. Uh, with a lot of, we just automate the head out of everything, and you just push your app, and then um, you can install it in Chrome and on your uh, with the Mozilla Open Web Apps. You can publish it in Mozilla Marketplace uh, for Firefox OS when it comes out uh, in January uh, next year. Um, I just give you. Really short demo of how to do that and how easy it is. Um, and this is all basically open source technologies. We're not using anything proprietary. You can do everything we do yourself. There's no login. Uh, you just have to read shitloads of documentation and fight all the bugs um, yourself uh, if you decide not to use a service like that. Um, so basically, you just um, uh, it works. With, uh, who here uses GitHub? Oh, lots of people. Uh, who here uses Heroku? Um, a few people. So it's basically a little bit like Heroku. Um, you also push to Git repository, and then your app will be uh, deployed in the background. So so you just create an app. Um, uh, you add a remote. Um, whoops. Ah, oh, sorry. Exists. Uh, you add a remote um, uh, to your Git repository, um, call it something, and then you just uh, um, push your master there, or push a local branch to the remote master. Whatever you push to master, um, oh, <laughs> uh, when you don't change something, you can obviously not uh, deploy it anymore. Um, something. Ah, sorry. Uh, so yeah, so it does a few precondition checks because uh, we also uh, have to change your HTML a little bit if you decide to use um, uh, to use some of the deployment strategies. Um, so let's hope this internet is working. Oh, um, I know. I actually used it on another app. So um, this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, you will actually see it live and uh, see the status of the deployment and everything. Um, so um, once it's deployed, um, yeah, you can then use it from here. Um, but let me f uh, show you first uh, the configurations. So you have a lot of configuration options um, for the different uh, stuff, like installation formats. There's some build stuff. Most of that, probably, if you're a professional developer, you do on your own, like minifying JavaScript. That's really just convenience. Um, applying licenses to files. Uh, yeah, generating app cache manifests so that you can use it offline. Compressing images. Uh, also, some add-on services that you can use. Um, so yeah, um, it's just automating a lot of stuff. Um, and when you finally have deployed your app, um, as I said, you can do this all on your own, and you can like build your own pages with all these uh, features. Um, you have a couple of options. Um, the two most uh, popular options right now, uh, where the two, uh, there's actually only one option that's working in production really well uh, to install apps uh, locally, which is uh, the Chrome Web Store at the moment. 
So as long as we don't have the Mozilla Marketplace, uh, you only get it in Firefox nightly. Um, but you can then actually go, oh yeah, and Google just changed their, um, um, their policy last week so that you cannot uh, in easily install third-party uh, packaged apps uh, from, uh, from somewhere other than the Chrome Web Store anymore, which is a little bit annoying because we have to do this now. Um, we will change it to uh, be, being hosted apps, then it's exactly the same as Mozilla Open Web Apps. But nevertheless, um, you, you get an app that you can actually uh, use locally. Um, this is a camera thing I built, uh, which uses a video element and stuff. Um, and this is actually um, a package software that runs locally uh, on your Chrome. It doesn't have any URL, that's because it has a Chrome extension URL. It's uh, really similar to extensions, except you get it on the, on the dashboard and can do a little, uh, yeah, it can do other stuff and uh, you can give it uh, permissions to do uh, other things. Um, so, um, for the future, what will be much nicer because it's an open format and Mozilla is actually uh, working on that in order to make it decentralized and every, so that everybody can have their own app store and you're not tied to the Chrome web store and you, you can actually host it yourself and you can sell it yourself. Um, is uh, uh, yeah, open uh, Mozilla Open Web Apps uh, is the name of that. So it's also oh, there's a bug. Um, it's quite similar, except uh, you also get something. Um, it was it used to be called Prism, uh, which is a runtime that lets you install it in your operating system. Um, so that's actually really nice. So when you when you install that in Firefox now, um, this is uh, an old install patchy should actually see some message, um, then you get this app in your operating system. So I can now launch this uh, in my macOS 10 in this case. Um, and this is actually, yeah, not the browser window. Oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah, so now you have a software running locally on your, well, uh, this one will only run locally when you have the app cache manifest, uh, which, uh, as I said, you can just pull a button, activate that, and then you get that for free on Finance, uh, at least. Um, and yeah, you have that in your app switcher. It's like any other software you have on your machine, except it's all a web app. Um, but you can, yeah, you can use it at any, like anything else. Uh, also, you can uh, do, if you need, for example, pop-ups for the, uh, for example, for authenticating uh, with your unhosted um, storage, uh, that's also possible. Uh, we created this uh, unhosted tutorial app, uh, which is really, really simple. You just set and get some keys um, via the HTTP API. Um, so this, this is actually how unhosted works. You enter, you enter your username at server name, something like this. By the way, every um, Five Apps account is a remote storage account. So um, we're not doing this so that you can host all your data with us. Uh, it's just for developing. So when you're developing unhosted apps and JavaScript apps, you can use Five Apps as a development remote storage. Every account that you create comes with a free remote storage attached to it. Um, there's actually not even a cap on how much you can store right now, but um, yeah, don't abuse it, please. Um, so then you would uh, usually you would do that in one button. This is just uh, for the for the. Um, um, for this tutorial so that it's easier to understand. There's also an annotated source code of that if you want to look through that um, with nice descriptions of uh, how to use remote storage JS, at least the last version of uh, remote storage JS. Um, oh shit. How can I? Okay, you, you should create single page apps uh, for installation in the system. I don't have a back button right now. What the? Okay, um, so, but you can indeed um, also open pop-ups. Sorry, probably don't. Oh, yeah. Um, it would usually, um, I'm, also, I'm already authorized, so it was so fast that you didn't see it, but you can, yeah. Uh, also, when it's installed in the system, you can open a pop-up, um, do auth, um, access your, uh, access another site, and then come back to your app that you installed in the system, and, uh, and use, for example, the OAuth um, access token. Um, so this is really nice. Um, as I said, if you use uh, the app cache manifest, it also 
uh, works offline. Um, uh, and at the moment, what we are working on actually is a whole um, app store using. I'm sorry. There's a whole app store for just uh, buying JavaScript apps, kind of like the Chrome Web Store, but uh, with a few differences. For example, you can uh, use any install format you want. And we actually developed this uh, whole app store as a JavaScript app on our own platform. So I'm sorry, something wrong with the server right now. Um, so we actually built a whole app store just as a JavaScript app and deploy it on the system, um, which is how powerful we think uh, uh, this uh, JavaScript apps uh, are. And um, we think at some point most user-facing software will shift to the web and you can use anything in a browser. Um, so yeah, um, we're actually, um, we also want to have um, proper open source support uh, in our app store. Which means, um, so most app stores um, have no policies or really bad policies for open source apps in their store. Uh, you've probably heard of um, of some I iOS, uh, uh, Apple App Store glitches. Um, also, Microsoft doesn't allow GPL apps. Uh, uh, it's it's really bad. So we wanna we wanna have a proper platform for open source apps um, uh, to be hosted on. It's, it'll also be free for open source forever. So kind of like like GitHub. Um, yeah, that's basically um, that's basically what I wanted to show you. Um, right. Thank you very much. Anyone has a question? Hello. Uh, you're talking about uh, unhosted client applications, but uh, do you have something like that for unhosted server-side applications? Um, what do you mean with unhosted server-side applications? Like, I mean, uh, maybe mean some server-side JavaScript uh, that can be... You, you can have a server-side application that uh, connects to your remote storage. If that's what you mean. Ah, okay. So I mean, maybe it's possible to write a server side JavaScript that is uh, can be distributed between servers, and then access it from client uh, in a scalable way. Yeah, there's a um, uh, you can write server side applications that let users connect their remote storage. For instance, Open Photo is a service that's written in PHP, and it allows you to uh, control your photos. And um, it has three options that you can connect Dropbox to it, or Google Drive, or your own remote storage. Yeah, but still, seems uh, still the one PHP script. What uh, what I'm talking about is more like uh, uh, make it server aside application itself and host it, like uh, not tied to the actual hosting. Anything about this? I'm not this? sure what you so. I'm not sure we can be so. That, one thing you can do is have a server-side application that's distributed. So, for instance, uh, Diaspora has you, everybody can run a server, and um, that makes it distributed. Is that what you mean? So you can have a decentralized website that is that uses server-side code, but not on one server or one server part or one domain name. But you can have like thousands of different websites running the same software, just like a lot of websites run WordPress. Uh, you could have a lot of websites that run a node in a network of, for instance, Diaspora. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's for, the, that's for instance what Diaspora does. Um, the difference is that then you have one application that you have to install a server for. And um, so you install a server, you install Diaspora on it, um, and then you can use Diaspora. But you can still not use all the other applications. So it's specific for one application. What we do with remote storage is generic storage that you install once, and you have, once you have a remote storage account, you can potentially have a lot of applications. So, but that's basically two approaches. That's definitely uh, okay. possible. And uh, this state, a... status net is another one. Identica works that way. You can run your own status net node and use it as as if you're using Identica.
Anyone has another question? No. Yes. Uh, what format is the user's data stored in on the is it human readable at all? Um, yeah, it's uh, JSON LD. So um, linked data is the idea of linked data is that you store uh, in the file you use links just you just like you use in hypertext. And um, originally linked data was proposed as XML, but that's a bit hard to read. So now there's a new just an adaptation of linked data to JSON. So that's easier to use with JavaScript. That's also not easier to use than XML. So it's called JSON LD, and that's the format we use for the data. So it's not entirely human readable, but it's sort of a programmer can just read it. You can just see all the fields. Yeah. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to say thank you because I think you have some really progressive ideas here, and I think it's basically the only way to solve the huge privacy problems we have nowadays with Facebook and Google and everything. Um, and the second question was, um, so if I was trying to build a replacement for Facebook with uh, unhosted technologies, um, how do you deal with overhead if you have um, many uh, decentralized instances, for example, users, and you have a list of maybe your friends, and you have to fetch um, user information from maybe 50 different storage engines or so. So um, yeah. are there ways in the protocol in the spec um, to to cache it or to make it faster somehow? Yeah, that's um, a generic uh, scalability problem anyway. Uh, even if you build, for instance, Twitter, then you have, there's not one central database where all the users are where you can just say, uh, select all tweets where uh, Twitter where handle is this or this or this or this or this or this and then just run a query and get it back. It doesn't work that way even in a, uh, in, in a website like Twitter. You have uh, no SQL design so you have uh, uh, each user is stored on a different server already and actually Twitter has the same problem within their own network of thousands of servers and the way you solve it um, is by mixing uh, pull and push. So if I'm following only three people, then it's easier to just do three requests every time I look at the page. But if I'm following a lot of people, um, or I'm following somebody who tweets once a year, then I don't want to retrieve their tweets every day, but just when they do tweet, they send me a push, they push a notification to my inbox. Um, and that, um, so, and, uh, the way the, the only way to do it well is with a heuristic that combines push and pull um, in a sensible way and also to allow some delay for tweets to arrive so when you tweet to a million followers then uh, not send them all and then say it was sent but just queue it queue, queue those jobs uh, on the Twitter server so you need a um, a job queuing server for that and an inbox which are both things that are not part of remote storage so there's definitely some more stuff um, uh, to that you need to really do that uh, remote storage is mainly so that each user has their own data and that uh, if you don't follow too many people it works and if you want to use add more uh, real-time functionality you can uh, add more other things as well to make such an analysis of web app work Anyone else? A question? Okay. Hi, this is more a question to Sebastian. Uh, do you get to open a uh, Five Apps account right now? Is, is it just a private beta, or can, can I just get an account right now and try it? Uh, it's a private beta at the moment. Um, you will have to wait. Um, so we're letting people in really slowly. Um, but you will probably in, in a week or so we uh, we can uh, give you access if you if you come to the IRC channel on so there's an unhosted channel on IRC which I really recommend you get help like 24 hours now that uh, one of the guys is actually uh, also in, in the US uh, you, you you actually get 24 hour help for remote storage uh, on IRC uh, we also have an IRC channel uh, five apps on Freenode um, if you come there we will probably give you access uh, instantly. <laughs> 
So uh, when you just tell us your username. Um, so. Looks like that was it for now. Anyone else? No. Thank you very much. Awesome.